welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Bay, Nur Chuck. And this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, AKA the internet's most passionate wine program. And as you can see, we have a wonderful guest. He has an amazing curly locks, <laughs> which I've always been impressed with. We've got three beautiful <laughs> bottles of Merlot. And I see there's a DVD here. Yeah, a phenomenal movie, Life and, Changer. Uh, why don't you tell the Vayner Nation who you are, my buddy? All right, first of all, happy birthday. I think you Thank had you a recent man. birthday. Appreciate it. And I have a Mare Love t-shirt for you. Thank you. All right, I like the go. swag. I like the <laughs> swag. <laughs> the movie Sideways came out, and Miles said, I'm not going to drink any... Blanking. Merlot. And so uh, I made a DVD, a movie, a documentary response to the movie Sideways. So we went around the world... Met a lot of great people. We have some animation, some music. We put it together in a wonderful new movie, Mare Love. We've done the uh, theater circuit and the uh, film festivals, and now it's out on DVD for everyone to enjoy in their, in their hands, at home, with friends, hopefully with friends. Always that's what wine's friends. all about, right? No doubt. We have enough things uh, separating us in this world. Wine shouldn't be so one of those So why don't you tell them who so. you are, because you went right into what this is. Why don't you tell them who <laughs> you are? My name is Rudy McLean. I uh, grew up, I'm actually originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And, uh, Are you a Packers fan? I was a Packers fan, and then I kind of was a, like a little Niners fan, and then uh, really, yeah, sorry, wow. a little <laughs> but, bandwagony or no spite. I think it was I got caught up in the dynasty, man. Okay, yeah, like the dynasty, the bandwagon. feel of the, the bandwagon. dynasty, bandwagon. probably. Yeah. But it was it was exciting. It was an yeah, exciting I, time. I understand. You know, how old are you? I'm 34. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but I grew up in St. Helena, California, and uh, I was at a party, and uh, Chris Phelps from Swanson Vineyard said, hey, I heard someone was making a movie about Merlot wine, so I looked it up, and no one was doing it, so I went out, and I grabbed my camera, and Chris Phelps from Swanson was my first, uh, first interview ever. Are you a filmmaker? Uh, I was writing screenplays at the time, for myself, movies I want to make, and uh, I was kind of stumped, and I said, you know what, I'm going to stick this, put this to the side, and uh, go shoot a movie, because I was like, you know, if you're going to do so it, So you're a we'll writer? Be. Yeah. And director and producer of uh, Mare Love. Crazy, right? Yeah, I mean, thing is, I started off with nothing. Grabbed my camera, it's like filming the Napa Valley sign, mustard, and just going for it. And uh, got some good interviews, got um, the winemaker for Chateau Petrus, and after that it was kind of, got once to write my ticket. You, once you got him, you were able to kind of go and tell everybody, you know, I got him, and, and they said yes? Is that kind of how it went? Yeah, uh, got, the, uh, got Chris Phelps and um, Tom Rinaldi, his mm -hmm. wife was my seventh grade teacher in history, and so she said, you know what, give Rudy a shot. You know, Tom Rinaldi, give Rudy a shot, let him be on the thing. You get some of these guys and then kind of other people. How did you pay for making a movie? Uh, with my own money. Flat out. <laughs> yeah, I mean. You went entrepreneurial. You do. You go, for the, you go for the wineries, but the thing is, every winery wants to control their own brand, their own look, their own thing. And it's like, they're not going to be like, oh yeah, just throw all in for And so, so you made the, how long did it take you to make the movie? About two years. From when to when? Uh, 2006 to um, through 2008, and I I was editing the movie all the way till the DVD release. And you interviewed me in during my wine. <laughs> that book was good. <laughs> Thank you. During my wine <laughs> my wine book signing in San Francisco. I did, and that was huge. My friend Jason Johnson. Hey Jason, I was at home and I was like, Gary's gonna be in San Francisco. I gotta get out there. It was like, and I was like, I was on the email with Ma, um, uh, Matt. Matt. And Matt was like, oh, I don't know if it's going to work out. But he was so cool and like just kept emailing back. And then I cornered you at the end. And you kept going. You kept going, no, Rudy, I really got to go, dude. I got to go. <laughs> dude, you're well, not. I stuck it out. You did. And I was like, that is so cool. Because the thing is, you see people and you know people who are famous and stuff like that. But like for you to really stick around and do that, that's huge. And people come on and they get excited. Even when I'm editing you on In Mare Love, like Marisol, uh, my fiance is like, she makes, she's like, when you talk, it makes her want to snap. Like, yeah, <laughs> you go, you go, you know what I mean? Thank you. Yeah, which reminds me of my mom when she watches football. She gets excited, and she's a football fan, but she goes, I love she her. goes, you better get that ball, boy. <laughs> you know what I mean? She gets all fired up and stuff, so. so. So, then what? You filmed it. I remember that we did that a year and a half ago. You, it comes out, and it comes, the distribution is done how? Did you try to sell it off to another, like a bit, like I'm fascinated now, I know we're going a little off track, but yeah, yeah. You're, you know, I'm, I might want to make a documentary one day uh, about root beer. And so, um, <laughs> you know, what did you do that, like from a business standpoint, you're, you're making the movie, are you trying to find like a distributor for the movie? Are you trying to find somebody bigger with dollars to get it in every theater in the world? Like what were, where were you on right, that? Was right. it totally like, like to me, being not educated in that field feels like, well, go to Sundance and make it happen. Like, you know, like what, what happens? 
You do a couple different routes. You can okay. go Sundance. You get picked. You get awards or whatever. You get Did recognized. Did you go to Sundance? Uh, we didn't get into Sundance. You tried. You submitted it. I submitted it. But the thing is about Merlove is... Not like Mondovino or other movies. It's like, we didn't go out to kill people. I could have recut this movie and, like, bashed people. Easy. Yeah? Oh, yeah. I could have yeah, just, like, some opened... Some people open their mouths totally. the wrong way. Seriously. But you know what? There's enough of that out there. You should have done that to me. I would <laughs> no. take it. I'm a big boy. If I'll... it would have helped you make your movie bigger, I'm willing to take the fall. I wanted to re it. <laughs> I wanted to do something fun, you know? Like, have some... And people laugh and they learn a lot. And so... So you're saying it was too positive to be controversial enough to maybe... People thought you were giving a little bit of a, a softball to the Merlot peeps. Yeah, kind of. But the, yeah. thing, the, but the movie has a ton of soul. That's the thing. Yeah. And so... We, you can do that route. We had some distributors contacting me, and I sent you know the DVD off to them, and uh, but there was kind of a no go there. But and did they did they feel like it lacked teeth? I just didn't get a response back. Yeah, I'd say people. So you're not sure. No, and so um, yeah, so we had it in theaters. We did a week long run in Seattle, and uh, various. How was that wild? It was cool, actually. They they just did it. I didn't have time to get up there, but they. Oh, you didn't get up there. No, that sucks. Yeah, it was kind of hectic, but um, anyway, so yeah. And so how's the DVD thing work? You find a company that does it, kind of? We did it all ourselves. So this is you? I did me. Like, I did I did the art, the editing. The Marty Soul did the the, uh, the cover design with the uh, the way it's Great vertical job. here. Love and it. not you're not you're never supposed to hold this movie sideways. It's supposed to be vertical. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and <laughs> and so yeah, we did it all ourselves. I did all the art, the animation, the editing. The and so where the do voiceover. they buy? Where do you buy the DVDs from? Amazon.com. So you did a deal with that, like you sent all the, the, you did one of those stores with them, like you sent them the inventory. Yeah, it does. It'll do yeah. film by Amazon. And how much is it? It is nineteen ninety nine right now. Awesome. That's really cool. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, just amazing. We live in a day and age because of things like Amazon, things like all these technologies that you made a freaking movie, dude. Yeah. It's an amazing. Thing. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. You Thank deserve you. it. So, what about wine? Where is your passion, lack of passion, kind of into it, doing a movie on mustard next, could care less. Where are you at with wine? <laughs> with wine, um, I really love wine. I didn't know that much about Merlot, but I've kind of fallen in love with it, especially um, Napa Valley. So was it the underdog thing? It was the underdog thing, but it was also, I just want to get out and make a movie. I saw it as an opportunity to get out and make a movie, but sure. tasting the wines from saint Million, you'll start falling in love with wine. Yeah, wine can suck you in. It can. You know, for me, it, I just wanted to get into something that people collected, because mm -hmm. I collected memorabilia, and so that, you know, obviously I wanted to help my family business, but it was the collecting that first got me in, just like you for a movie, but then the wine sucked me in. Exactly right. And so are you drinking wine daily now, weekly, monthly, hourly? Maybe weekly. Okay. Once a week? Uh, yeah, but it kind of flows in different... Yeah. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's What's less. What's your favorite beverage? What do you drink? Water? Soda? Smart water probably is my favorite Smart beverage. Smart water. Yeah. How about tea? Uh, I'm not a big tea head. Big mistake, Lou. <laughs> get on it. Get on it now. Get on it. All right, let's get into the first wine. <laughs> okay, cool. Just I mean, just amazing. And, and please, if anybody's seen the movie, please leave a comment. And if anybody does go out and see the movie, come back and leave a comment in the episode. I want to see those comments. So, Swanson, 05, one of the first Merlots I ever had, by the way. Okay. Back in the 94 vintage. Um... Uh, 87 points spectator and tanser, 36 bones, 90% Merlot, uh, a little bit of cab and Syrah after that. Why did we, you know, you, you, you've kind of been instrumental in picking these wines. Swanson's here because he was your first interview. He's the guy that started all kind of. Mm -hmm. And so, good guy? Yeah, it's a good guy. <laughs> what? You're like, that's, and he's the guy you picked, and so that, you like, tossed it to me. I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah, the answer is yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Chris Phelps was my first interview, and he was kind of, um, he was instrumental too in setting a lot of things up in France and everything else. So he did help you quite a bit. Yeah, you definitely. guys formed a nice friendship. Yeah, and I knew him before that. I was How? A, I am an Eagle Scout of uh, Troop One, Saint Helena, California, and uh, he was. Is he, it like a sign? Like from <laughs> the, yeah. the E? Yeah, from the <laughs> the claws. <laughs> the claws. Is it mine? Is it? <laughs> it is this. Mod is. That's good, man. He's I'm on telling it. you. So anyway, he's the backbone of the show. We. Uh, we we helped out with a couple of trips. I knew him from then. That's when I first Got met him. Got it. Yeah, yeah. Is he an Eagle Scout? He. Or I'm not sure if he is an Eagle. His son is just got Eagle actually. Got it. Got yeah. it. Very cool. All right, let's sniffy sniff this up. Okay. You said get in there, right? Now listen, I was very impressed. I was excited. <laughs> so there's some really clear blackberry flavors coming through here. Um, and uh, by the way, I love your shirt. Thank um, you. And so like, Thank a little bit, of, a little bit of creaminess coming through. A little hint of kind of. Maybe a little oakiness. 
a hair of black tea on the back end, which I like quite a bit. Picking up anything else on the nose? Hmm? I don't know. It's like um, pretty red intim- wine. It's it's pretty intimidating being here and hearing you. Don't like, be scared. Okay. Just whatever you you know. If it's red wine, that's fine. If it's fruity, it's fine. Just whatever you know. Yeah, the the black fruit, you know, kind mm-hmm. of like a plum thing going on, but darker than that though. Mm-hmm. Kind of like getting in, getting into the earth, you know what I mean? Getting some soil, some terroir in there. No question. I mean, that's yeah, yeah. where like that that black tea comes in here. Um, good firm tannins, good bright fruit. Uh, clearly black. I agree. Blueberries, a, a little plum, mm. a lot of plum, like Asian plum kind of thing going on. Kind of creamy and soft on the back end. Actually, quite quite delicious in a lot of ways, but a little simplistic. And when you're pushing 36 bones, I get a little bit worried there at the price point. This really acts a lot more like a 22, 18, 23 dollar Merlot to me that I'd be excited about. But I think Stephen Hanser and Spectator both really did a nice job breaking this wine down. You know, I see they both gave um, a Lavernius Coles uh, number 87. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna go a little bit higher than them. I, I like it a little more. I would go 88 plus on this wine. I think it's 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 quite well made, uh, and I like the smooth finish. Yeah, I like how it, it continues to talk to me a little bit afterwards. I mean, some of these like things... Like whispering or like a full-fledged conversation? Full-fledged conversation. O- on the finish, though, I mean, I get a, a lot of I get a lot of fruit and exposure on the um, on the opening. Um, kind of fades off on the mid-palate, but then I'm still... Tasting it. Yeah. It does have a solid finish. It's, it's a good, solid Merlot. I would say that I'm a little bit... Um, uh, I think it's a little overpriced at the price point. That would be the, the biggest uh, concern I have. Okay, let's move on. Let's rinse. This wine I'm very excited about. Now, did uh, did these guys get involved in the movie? Are you kidding? They were the backbone? Dude, Andrew Will? He's Chris Will. Camarda, he's the man. Now, yeah, he's he's right here. The other one was Chris Phelps, and uh, this is Chris Camarda. I don't know if you can see him. Chris Camarda's all the way here to the right. Chris Camarda, we got off the plane in Washington State. By the way, Washington State Wine Commission, they're the greatest folks on earth. They treat us so well. Better than a lot of places we went in the world. But um, Chris Camarda is, uh, we got the plane, he interviewed, we interviewed him, and um, he was just really, really cool guy. Kind of looks a little bit like Andy Warhol, but he's. Makes great wines. The Andrew Will uh, Sealed Chevelle 06 Vintage, 93 points Jay Miller, 92 points Wine Spectator, 93 points Stephen Tanzer. You know, 50 to 60 bones, one of the premier premier wines in all of, uh, of Washington State. And also, if you notice here, um, it is 40% Merlot, 37% Cab Franc, 19 Cab, and 4 Petit Bordeaux. So it's predominantly Merlot, but it's obviously a big blend, this wine. Which is a cool thing, I mean, with, with Merlot and blending blending wines. I mean, it's really a... its origin, right? It's yeah. where Merlot comes from. Merlot, don't forget where you came from. <laughs> That's true. You know, don't Your get roots. mad when people are blending. <laughs> you need him to move over a little bit, more. Oh, the bottles. Oh, Thanks, Mike. <laughs> Um, you know, Merlot is really, really until like, you know, the late 70s, uh, a, a blending varietal. We started seeing Louis Martini, Gunlock Bunshu started, you know, making 100% Merlots in the late 70s and then, you know, into the 80s and then you had that huge explosion in the U.S. in the late 80s into the 90s, really the mid 90s, Merlot just became the it. I mean, Merlot, ironically, where the funny thing lies in Sideways is Merlot was its you know, a decade and a half prior was that generation's Pinot Noir. Yeah, it exploded and everyone jumped into the market and kind of got blown out. You know, people, they started making watery Merlot and passing it off and people started going, that's pretty bad stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. So what's sideways the, is kind of the knockout what, What's the biggest thing you learned uh, about Merlot from your documentary? The idea that of terroir, that a, a sense of place, that the fact that you can have a Merlot and it can be in 10 different places or in 10 different people's hands and it can be 10 different expressions. The fact that it can be... Uh, it's art. It can, it's an art, but it can be a chameleon. So like saying you don't like Merlot or saying you don't like any particular varietal... It's not, like saying you don't like people with curly hair. It's like grape racism. Yeah, it really... It is. Of course it is. Of co- How many people use that in the movie? Uh, what, grape racism? Yeah. No one, I just... You just made it up right now? Yeah. Mott, let's, let's go to GoDaddy. Register to me. <laughs> I'm going to take that. All right, now this wine is absurd. The the bouquet, the nose is immense. Just great, you know, bright, almost, do you, do you smell the citrus, like orange peel on this nose? Which I think is so fascinating in a red wine. I always get like this orange peel, 
very bright raspberry, black raspberry flavor. So the nose, very kind of candy esque. It smells delicious. If a raspberry had the skin of a uh, of your orange, I think that would be. Yeah, that would be it. I like that. That's a good uh, imagery. Let's give it a whirl. What do you think about this? It's pretty gorgeous and expressive. Like just some spice and uh, the, like the raspberry, a little bit of like the, the Bing cherry for me. And um, are you finding it gamey at all? Like leathery, kind of beef jerky, anything like that in the mid palate? No, 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 just super bright. A lot of fruit. Yeah. It's very candy esque. For my palate, it's a little fruit bomby. Just a hair. Yeah. It gets just a hair. Okay. It gets it gets a little candy esque. I feel like I went to the five and dime and got a little bit busy. You know, just like <laughs> now and later Skittles. You know, just the the, the barrel of the dollar less. game. <laughs> yes. Like there's a lot of candy fruit going to bottle caps. It's just you know, there's a lot of candy in my mouth, which is an exciting thing, especially around Halloween time and all that. It's got good acidity, got good freshness, good tannins on the back end. For a oomph, just a, a shoulder, just a oomph over the top for me, but well made, clearly delicious. And I, I, I think you'd find it very tough to find one out of 50 people who don't like the way it tastes. It's pleasant. Uh, there's a little hint of like back end mintiness that I catch in the back end, which I think is quite fascinating. And, it, and I almost want to chew it. It's got this tremendous weight as a wine. But the candy factor, the sugar, in this wine does throw my palate off a little bit. Again, understanding that that's in the minority, understanding that I'd rather drink pickle juice than fruit punch, understanding that. For me, it's like a 91 point wine, but I can see why everybody else went higher in this and I can see a lot of people going even higher than that. Why do people go higher on that then if that's what you're... Well, I mean, you know, Parker, Inspector, and Tanzer all went 92, 93 points, and I respect that, and, you know, I, I understand why. I, I'm a little bit more sensitive to fruit, especially the sugar of the fruit, mm. um, than most people. My blueberries, the ones I like, they have a little sour tag, cool. right? You know, they're not that completely sweet. Like, mm -hmm. I don't like when, like, fruit, anything that's soft in fruit is devastating to me. Huh. Like, any fruit that's soft, I can't eat. Like, cherries, really? I'll, I'll, you know, when I grab them at a bowl, they gotta be firm. Wow. Plums, peaches, like... When it gets too sugary, as it gets a little bit mm -hmm. more mature, I don't get, I don't like that as much, and I see that very common in the wines that I like and don't like, and that becomes a very big divide line. And that's why I hate so much, and why I always stress to you guys, I'm going to take this platform to sit on the soapbox. Go for it, go for it. Trust your own palate. <laughs> oh, listen geez, to me. Yeah. Don't listen to him. Don't listen yeah. to all these geniuses here. It is your palate. That's exactly. You right. know it, but the only way you can really get there is by trying different things. That's exactly right, and that's just like life. Get out of your, You told me, dude. Seriously, you really inspired the last third of Mare Love. Seriously, Thanks, seriously. To get out there, and because it, it was summing up everything. We had done all our travels, and then it just locked in when I saw you, because it was like, try your, everyone was telling us, try things and, and learn for yourself, and and uh, and find out for yourself. Get out of your comfort zone. That Absolutely. was your thing that said. Get out of your comfort zone, try, try new, new wines. wines. You were like, you are even like, I'm afraid you're going to cut it out one time, you know? <laughs> try new wines, you know? That's it, why I keep saying it. It's just what I want. All right, now this I'm very excited about. You pulled a real coup here. <laughs> this is a wine that's not even released yet. Yeah. And it comes from the mucho heralded 07 vintage. 07 is all pumped up right now in the wine world. Um, and this comes from one of the great vineyards, the Three Palms Vineyard, really made famous by Sterling and Duckhorn back in the day. Provence, 65 bones. Uh, small amount of Cab, Cap Franc, Petit Bordeaux, and a little hair of Malbec, but predominantly uh, Merlot. Tell me the story of how you snagged this bottle. Well, Tom Rinaldi. Tom Rinaldi uh, said, say hey to Gary for me. Very cool, Tom. How hey. are you, my friend? And uh, so I said, Tom, I'd like, a, I'd like a bottle that you want to uh, have on the show. And so he said, hey, let me get you this. And I drove over to Provenance and he handed it off to me. Now, Provenance has been making some crazy wines. They've made one of the... One of the few Sauvignon Blancs that I've ever thought was, you know, I'm such down on Sauvignon Blanc from California, just don't think it's the proper terroir, but they made a great, great Sauvignon Blanc from there. They've been making some really intense wines. This winery has been very impressive to me from afar. <laughs> um, so, how, how was his part of the movie? Tom Rinaldi was my, I think, second or third interview. Right. And uh, Tom Rinaldi was the original guy. And your second favorite. <laughs> yeah, at, at Duckhorn. And so Duckhorn was one of the originals with, with Merlot. And uh, so I wanted to have uh, Tom Rinaldi in the movie, and he was sure. really cool. We spent all, we spent few three four hours during the day, and took me into the barrel room, and we 
had it Pretty out. Cool, huh? Yeah, very cool, very cool guy. He's got he's a great character too. I mean, all these guys are great characters. Now Michelle Roland made an appearance on them in the movie. Oh yeah, Michelle Roland's in there, and uh, Olivier Barraway from. I see uh, Peter Mandavi. Yeah, Olivier Barraway from. Uh, he was at Cheval Blanc. Now he's at Petrus. Now and I his see. Father. I see Bobby Parker. Let's quote here. Yeah, yeah, that's it, that's. It, that's I'm Pierre so glad you brought that up. Please. Uh, Pierre from Chateau de las Cours, um, and he's always he said this too. He said, "Trust your own taste," kind of thing. But he calls Robert Parker Bobby Parker. So he says, you know, they have the bottle, 90, 95 points by Bobby. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> kind of thing. So he's really relaxed about it and stuff. But he's also like, look, it's about the terroir. It's about the sense of place. Because if you can't go to a place, if you can taste their wine and it's expressive of it, you can have an experience of a place, not even visiting there. That's right. Whereas if everything, everybody's wearing makeup and covering up with the oak and this and that, exactly, it's all the same. Yeah. Very cool. Let's give us a whirl. I'm excited to try this, Tom. Thank you so much. You know, 65 bones, not bashful about the price point. It's a, it's a nice throwdown number, but a very special vineyard. A very special vineyard. If oh, you ever Sloan get Upton. What's that? Sloan Upton, who owns uh, Three Palms Vineyard. Yeah. He's a great guy. He's in the movie. He, people say he steals the show. Nice. Because he's hilarious. He's like, because he's like, if they don't get that hint of deer, deer do, yeah. it's like they're not ta- they feel like they're not tasting it right, you know. So anyways, he's part of Three Palms Vineyard. Sniffy sniff it up. Now, out of all the wines, this by far is the most aromatically challenged because it's probably very young. I mean, it's quite tight on the nose. It's mm-hmm. it's really big. You know, you can you can just get a sense. It's like a shadow. You're like, oh crap, what's coming around the corner? Right. It's a big dude. Because you still have the oak and all the influence. Um, it's just tight. Yeah. I'm just not smelling a whole lot. Aromatically, it's still very very tight. Let's give it a whirl. Okay. Much more approachable than I expected, actually, on the palate. Yeah. It's much smoother and much, uh, I mean, it's still, you still have a lot of fruit there. Of course, you have the big influence by, you know, tannin and oak, because it's just so, the oak it's monster, like, the it's oak, like, I feel like the oak monster kind of like, it's not, it didn't come out, Mop, but it's like over the shoulder, like, hey, <laughs> hey oak <what's> monster, <laughs> you know, kind of thing going on. There's clearly some of it going on here. Um, I really do like the dark fruit. There's like a little bit like a, a shaved chocolate aspect of I, kinda, I smelled chocolate actually. Is that right? You yeah. just said something. Sorry dude. That could just... have been a huge moment for you. I know. Because I would have been like I don't get it and then the palate would be like oh my god you picked up the chocolate yeah. on the nose. Huge missed opportunity. <laughs> Devastating <laughs> for you. Right. You may want to leave this right me. now. I mean, yeah, right. This is something you will rewind. No way. I will never leave. I'm going to stick I mean, it out. <laughs> I mean this is something yeah, yeah. you're going to rewind in your mind probably for the next three to seven decades. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a big mistake. I don't think it's that big actually. No okay well, you're probably right. So <laughs> Really well made, big. I gotta be very honest, and there may not be many people in California I have more respect for than Tom and what he's done in his career, but I'm not completely feeling this wine all that much. I do think it's young and a little bit awkward and needs to come together, mm-hmm. but it's not super big. It, it, it's a little complex. It's a little awkward. Again, I'm gonna really side because of the skill set of the vineyard, the producer, and Tom, that there's gonna be more coming on, but I do find it lacking a little bit of oomph, just a I, I just find it a hair boring, and for my palate, it's kind of like a, you know, 88, 87 plus kind of kind of wine. I'm just not pumped about it. Can you tell this early though? You know, listen. First and foremost, the travesty of this concept that you know people put in all this time and effort into making these wines. We pop them, we pour them. We <laughs> I know. Them, I know. We make like, a judgment. There's yeah. a you know what I can do is just be honest. Right. Right. That that's all I've got. All I've got is I've drank a lot of wine mm-hmm. in my life. I don't think I'm a wine expert. I think that I've tasted a lot of wine. And, I mean, you know, to compare this wine to the last wine, I just don't see a lot of people liking it more. I see what you're saying. I don't. And, yeah. uh, and more importantly, you know, I've tasted a lot of young wine. And I just feel like they're, and, I, and it's why I probably, you're right. Yeah. That's why I said, listen, the pedigree, the vineyard, I've had three palms early on from Duckhorns in the past, and they were awkward, and they put on weight, hmm. and, and I so I start assuming like this may do the same. Okay. It's really tough for me to get crazy enthusiastic for the variation right, right. when they've got to roll the dice on sixty-five bones. Exactly. Yeah. Other than that, though, I I think that um, I think that uh, you know, you just do the best you can. Totally. You know. Yeah, I definitely agree. Yeah. So, what's your next movie? So, or will you ever do that again, or are you gonna go back to writing <laughs> screenplays? Well, I'm gonna go back to writing <laughs> screenplays. Um, I have a feature that I wrote that I'm gonna that I'm gonna shoot that I can't really talk about because I'm still putting that thing together. But can you give anything to the Vayner Nation? Um, massive. Well, one snobby. of the guys. One of the guys. Very snobby. Me? Not, no, not snobby. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sn- um, not snobby. What's, help me, Mod here. 
um, curious. Curious? You know, very, you know, curious. Okay. What's the word I'm looking for? Nosy! Nosy. That's You're nosy? Not nosy. Well, uh, the Vayner Nation, not me. Okay, cool. Very nosy. Yeah. No, so I'm going to do, uh, I'm currently I'm doing a show for uh, helping my friend Judd Finkelstein. He, if you want to kind of view a skew of wine, he's doing a Judd's Enormous Wine Show. I'm helping him shoot that. And then... Uh, Is that Judd's Hill? Yeah, Judd's yeah. Hill. I like some of their wines in the... Actually, their 92 Merlot was one of my early favorite wines. Really? Have yeah. you tried their uh, Petite Syrah? I have. They make really good wines. I loved their cabs for years. They're 94, 97. Really? Petite Syrah for me for them is just yeah. game Petite changer. Petite for me in general is a game changer. Yeah. Um, and then uh, a friend of mine, uh, John Ingelsgerger, he's uh, Johnny Vino. He's going to... He and I are going to write a script and shoot a movie as well. Very cool. Yeah. So that, that one's going to be about wine. It's going to be kind of like... The we're, greatest we're, wine person that ever We're writing lived. it right now, but it's going to be like... Uh, <laughs> It's going to be like, uh, you know, Wizard, Wizard, of, Wizard of Oz of wine. Seriously? <laughs> yeah, seriously. We're going to go there, dude. You're going to go somewhere weird on it? We are. We really Psychedelic. are. Psychedelic? Yeah, because the thing is, everything is so, like, drink pretense with wine, of wine, dude. Right, so you're going to, like, the, the premise is going to be, like, drink a crap load of wine, <laughs> put on Led Zeppelin backwards and watch your movie? Uh, that's about half of it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, we're going to we're gonna loosen it up a little bit. And that's what my yeah. love is all about, too. Just loosening it up. Loosen it up. You know what I mean? Have Booty. fun. Question of the day. You get to ask the Vayner Nation. I know you know the drill. Any question you want. Yeah. About cinema, Mino, curly hair, whatever you want. Yeah. I'm going to give away um, five DVDs to the first five people who post. Good for you. Of Mare Love. So, because, you know. Post of Mare Love? I'm sorry, post on your show. But you mean like the first five people that, that Post might about the question. Okay, okay. Is that answer, okay? You mean answer the question? Yeah. Done. Answer of course. the question. So, sorry, sweets. I... <laughs> no, no problem at all. Okay, so. How do you want to execute that? Should the first five people that know they've won email you at an email address? The first five people that won, I'd love you. I'd love for you to be able to handle. It. I can drop them off, give them to you, and you. Can I don't want to work, dude. And Mott is, you know, Mott's pissed already. <laughs> so they can let, contact let, let's me. Let's do this. Let's do this. A lot of people are going to want to say hello. Probably talk to you about the movie. Let's link up your email in here. It's good for you. You can meet okay. a lot of people. Mott, can you help me out with that? What, what's your email? Uh, info at marylove.com. Beautiful. So if you're one of the first five winners, please just email him. Tell him your username. He can. He can. You know. Quantify that, and then that will and do put that. in there too what you want me to. Sign. I can sign it and, and put a personal message to you as well. Just what do you be mean? cool. Of course, yeah. answer a question. So the, oh, question, the question, the big idea about Merlot is is the idea of terroir, your sense of place. Aaron Pot at Blackbird Vineyards told, told me, hey Rudy, you know what? Terroir is also for people. If you're from Brooklyn, there's something of Brooklyn that you take with you wherever you go. If there's something, if you're from Saint Emilion, there's something of Saint Emilion that you take with you wherever you go. So I would like the Vayner Nation to reach out. And to first identify, where's your personal terroir? Where are you from? And then give a little bit about what do you take from your personal terroir around with you to the world. For me, I'm originally from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. There's something of me that I take with me wherever I go, thinking of me and my brother slinging newspapers and 18 inches of snow uh, all winter long. And something about like hustling, that. being family, being together, getting out I there, like and making something more of yourself is, is kind of what I take with me wherever I go. So... I'd like you guys to uh, answer that. Brilliant. Lurkers, it's your chance to come out. Phenomenal question. One of the best ones I've heard, actually. Thank I you like that much. a lot, man. Appreciate it. You, with a little bit of me, and this movie, <laughs> we're changing the wine world, whether they like it or not.